All right, let's do this. Almost 5.30 a.m. Getting ready to head to the lobby in the hotel, meet a few of the dogs to hit the gym. Uh, Josh Reyes in the gang, so let's see who makes it. Let's see who's up. First ever leadership development seminar. You know, can you imagine the lives that are going to be affected in the future? Uh, the futures that are going to be affected because of all of us getting together tonight. Uh, and I said, yeah, man, I'm super excited. Way to go. Looking sweet. That's dope. Mr. Foster. <laughs> Mikey Russell, Travis Barnes. Congrats, man. Good job, baby. Let's go. Keep leading. Let's get it. Good job. So just walking in from uh, a good night hanging out with my man Darren Sugiyama. He's gonna be uh, speaking to the crew tomorrow. And um, it is 10.37 and I'm in the room. I don't know where the rest of these young men and fine young ladies are at. I have no idea where everybody's at, but I'm gonna pray for them before I hit the sack. Hopefully nobody's feeling too rough in the morning. Uh, but I can tell you this, I'm excited for, uh, for tomorrow. Um, I'm excited about the relationships that I could see that have been formed here by people that never have an opportunity to meet each other. Uh, typically they just see each other over computer screens or telephone. And uh, for them to meet in person and to form relationships is great. But uh, super excited to uh, hear from Darren. Uh, tough looking son of a gun, man. Look like one of those uh, New York mob movies down in Chinatown or something. You know, one of the old mobsters. And, uh, you know, once once you have a chance to, to sit there and get to know him and talk to him, you know, you really have a, a an opportunity to see inside of his head inside of his heart and uh man what a great guy great guy who loves his family loves his son eight-year-old son uh loves his wife passionate about helping people and, and uh trying to make the world a better place man and those are the people that i want to be surrounded by those are the people i want to introduce my people to uh that can have a lasting effect on on their life so uh we're excited to uh hear from darren tomorrow uh, to wrap up the Leadership Seminar, uh, seminar 2017. Uh, tomorrow morning we're going to be kicking off bright and early, 8 o'clock in the morning with uh, the grind team, the people that led us, top 10 dogs that led us over the last couple months. We'll be hanging out with them for breakfast and uh, stay tuned, should be fun tomorrow. Let's get it. Come on, this is the breakfast with the, breakfast. With the dogs, with the grind team. Boom, boom. Mr. Valentine in the house. Snyder in the house.
Issue number five, the haters. How many of you guys get all pissed off when the haters come out? Anybody? Okay, if you Google all the names of all your haters, guess what you're gonna find? Nothing. Nothing. Because they haven't accomplished anything. Anyone that has accomplished anything, you're going to find negative stuff online about them, including Mother Teresa. Yeah, and it's a hard thing, it's, it's a hard thing to, to accept, but you have to just accept it. It's just the way it is. None of those negative things have held me back from accomplishing what I set out to accomplish. And they won't in the future. And they shouldn't hold you back either. So you, I, I want to encourage you guys out there, please, because this will change your life in other people's lives. That you have to believe in your heart that it's not only for you, but it's more for them. Almost every single person that stood up, um, I believe I was putting them in a better position uh, than they were already in. And, and so you have to believe that in your heart. And you have to understand in order to elevate yourself in leadership, you can only get so far through resumes. You have to bang out resumes. I'm a resume. Somebody called my resume and changed my life. But from that one resume was a bunch of personal recruits that came from that point forward. That's how we founded this agency. Just leaving uh, Inspire Mods over here on the north side in, uh, in Youngstown. And uh, great time. We had uh, 115 kids today in attendance. Started to develop relationships. This is day three um, of us starting to work with the kids during the school year. And it always uh, relights my fire to uh, go through the grind and everything that it takes to uh, help do my part to make this program work here. And uh, in Youngstown with my man J.A. How you doing? Back there with me on the on the ground, but it's all it's always there, special when when we have the opportunity to uh, get out of the meeting room and go interact with the kids and develop relationships to uh, not only pour into their life but just relight your fire because there's a grind that goes with uh, making it all happen. And uh, so yeah, so now we're headed to the uh, board meeting starts at six o'clock so we got about 20 minutes to get there and uh, we're gonna be discussing the black tie uh, the, the gala the Mardi Gras uh, gala 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 uh, in a couple weeks so stay tuned we got Steph over here grinding it out Justin Smaltzy my man Trent Come on, and, and uh, so when we say when we say the grind, when we say the grind, we see a hundred and some kids running around playing today. What you don't see is four or five big kids staying up all night trying to make this stuff happen. You know what I'm saying? This is there's a grind for other people to shine. There's a grind before the shine, and so we're at like what's that? seven o'clock probably at least another half hour hour back to the crib you know the whole deal so it's a it's a grinded out type of day we are how many days till kickoff of the of the gala 10 days yep 10 days, Ten days.
Why do we grind? For the kids! On our way to Marcus's house, the man who called my resume 12 years ago, probably right about this time, uh, going to hang out with my man and uh, my goddaughter. Her birthday's here in the next few weeks, and I won't be able to celebrate with her because uh, I'll be out of town. So I wanted to drop her off some gifts and, and hang. Got my man Dion driving for us. Been grinding the whole time, making calls, talking to my squad, getting everybody ready to rock and roll, talking to the kids that I'm mentoring. My dude Kelly got me on the hook. All A's gets him an iPhone. So I'm doing this to hold myself accountable for what I told him. And uh, A's and B's, we're going to do a major celebration with my man. So uh, let's rock and roll. We're less than one week away right now from the gala, uh, which is exciting. On the way home, we're going to stop and um, grab some autograph stuff from uh, Jim Trestle on the way. He said he got us some, uh, some stuff we could auction off at the gala, so that'll be cool. Uh, so just just getting to Cleveland right now, stopped in Youngstown to get my man Dion. Dion, we've been grinding out here. Yeah. Huh? What I've been doing the whole time? The whole time making calls, making phone calls to the agency and all the leaders and the RGAs and all the managers, making sure everyone's on track. Grinding. Sunday. Right? Yeah. Sunday. Sunday fun day. This is fun changing lives let's get it let's make it happen so stay tuned to marcus's house um super unique marcus uh that's the guy in some of the videos i talk about when he called my resume um i thought for months that he was six foot five bald black dude with this deep voice marcus smith and when i met him he was five eight skinny white guy uh unbelievable to me um but marcus got a basketball court in his house with the Jumpman and AIL logo on it and swimming pool uh, in his house and uh, stop at this gas station too um, and he's a single dad and uh, a super awesome humble person so it's very rare you see somebody that's driving Maseratis Ferraris and have basketball courts in their house and in their 30s and um, still maintain some humility and uh, so Marcus is one of those people that stays humble and um, has a heart of gold. Uh, but he's tough. He's like Nick Saban. You know, he's like playing for uh, Urban Meyer, Nick Saban, or, you know, coaches that are tough. Bill Cower type cat. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Marcus, what's, what's going on? Now, Marcus, when you were 19 coming in, what would, what would be a tip you would give for someone to focus on that young? What would be the main thing they should focus on? To uh, start off all the distractions. You know, being 19, being young, uh, you have distractions at any age, but when you're younger, you, you're faced with a lot of temptations, you know, a lot of partying, a lot of socializing, a lot of time that and that you end up giving to places that don't give you any return back. So I think starting off distractions and making sure that the people that you associate with um, are ones that are gonna make you better. When I was 19, I didn't have a whole lot of those people around me that were my age that could make me better. Uh, therefore, I had to do a lot of uh, inventory check and check my circle and make my circle a lot smaller to go where I was trying to go. No. I gave similar advice, you know, we got these hats, they say, this isn't one of them, but you know, it says RWTW, you know, so that's roll with the winners. Uh, so I think you need to, you know, roll with the winners. Try to find a way to put yourself in the environment of people that are where you want to be, and then that'll go hand in hand with uh, if you're trying to do something special, you know, maybe that special is something that only 1% of America can attain. That means that you're going to be doing something different than 99% of the world. And so 99% of the world is going to tell you that you're weird, that you're wrong, that you're spending too much time, that you're grinding, that you shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing that. And so you have to be careful who you're taking advice from.
All right, let's go take a tour real quick. Got the indoor pool. Gym. Basketball court indoors. This is how it all happened. This is how it all started. That logo right there on the floor. AIL. Standing at the free throw line. But in business, there ain't no free throws. You only get what you earn. Get what you grind for. All right, now Simon, what advice would you give to a, to a young individual that's coming into this industry that's looking to maybe get into real estate invest, investments down the road or any other avenues that you're getting into now. Obviously, they won't experience them until they get there, but what advice would I, you give? I know Marcus is gonna touch a little bit you know, on this, and so I'll just, I'll, I'll say that you have to save, you know, have a saving goal. Like, people don't have goals, they just kind of spend it whatever they want when they start making money. So a lot of times people will come into this industry and at a young age they start making a ton of money, but they don't have goals, you know, to save money. And so what I would do is, is, is set goals. So I want 50,000 in the bank by this time, 100,000 dollars in the bank at this time, and keep moving it out of your checkings account into a different account so you don't see it, so you're not spending it, you know, all the time. You mentioned real estate. Um, you know, I think that real estate happens when You've made your main thing your main thing. You know, so the, the, where I made my money was in this industry, in this business. And I was able to do real estate on the side because I made the main thing my main thing. And I didn't give this a ton of time. I just put some money over there, but it was only after I had stacked dough and put 80, 100 hour weeks in for my first 18 months into the business. You know, so with that, I, you know, I just think whether it's investing in real estate or just saving, you just gotta be smart, you know, with your money. I tried to make myself go broke time so what, what, what does that mean I tried to if I seen 40,000 in my bank I tried to move it somewhere I couldn't touch it and go back to like 2,000 and make myself feel like I was broke again and, and start hustling all over all, all over again so my advice would be to just put it somewhere that you can't see it um, uh, set savings accounts you know goals for yourself and, and goals for yourself before you start m making moves in any other investments or, or things of that nature but it all boils down to discipline that's why I start preaching to people young in the business about discipline. Why are you throwing a fit when a, when a guy's 10 minutes late for an 8 o'clock meeting when he's 18, 19 years old? You heard me on my way up here talking to somebody that you know, about discipline and what time you get up in the morning and, and stuff because the way you do anything is the way you end up doing everything. And so when you show me somebody that's disciplined with their emotions and with the time that they wake up and with the decisions that they make, those people end up being disciplined with their finances. When you show me somebody that's dis not disciplined with their finances and you look at other areas of their life, they're probably not disciplined there either. So they're, they're making these mistakes all over the place. Finances just so happens to be another department. So I think it's, you know, be disciplined in everything in your life. That's why it's mind, body, and spirit, mind, body, and spirit. So you disciplined enough to get up in the morning when the alarm clock goes off, discipline to stick to your workout routine, discipline to stick to your diet, discipline to stick to everything that you're supposed to be doing, you're gonna be disciplined enough to manage your finances. 